Hello everybody and welcome to Noelle's Big Family Life. If you are new, thank you so much for stopping by. I am Noelle and that is my husband Charles. We are a large family of nine and I have all the kids ages down below um, if you want to check that out. So this is our budget video. So we are going to share with you what we are going to be doing for our budget. So I'm going to start with my end, the groceries and the envelope system that I'm going to be using. And then I'll kind of let him take over the other part. Okay. So how this is going to work on my end, um, I'm going to talk to you about the groceries and the household items. Um, I am going to be basically following Jordan pages, um, program but tweaking it to fit my own so if you haven't checked her out it is fun cheap and free jordan page she has a youtube video they have books they have budget boot camp all kinds of stuff um we are not in debt let me clarify that we are doing this to stay out of debt and not get into debt as we have had some expenses come about and to save some money so the first thing that i'm going to do is you get $100 per person in your household. So our household is a house of nine. So we get $900 a month. This $900 or $100 a person includes everything that you need, that you buy on a regular routine, every week, every month thing at the store. So that includes your toiletries. That includes um, everything that you do cleaning supplies, um, food, groceries, everything. Diapers, if you have one in diapers, um, you know, just all of that. Now with Luke being autistic, that does change things a little bit for us um, because there are certain foods that I have to buy for him. So that will be a little bit different. His, his iPad just went off. So that's a little bit different than what maybe your family would do. I have to figure that, you know, the rest of the money around that. Um, but still within staying in that amount of money. Okay, so the first thing that I do is I'm going to look at the calendar and I'm going to see how many weeks are in the month because I'm going to take out $900. I have picked Thursday to be the day that I'm going to go to the grocery. So I'm going to look and see how many Thursdays are in the month. So if there are four Thursdays, like in this month, then I'm going to grab out four envelopes. I have three right here in my hand. <laughs> and I'm going to put $225 in each one of these envelopes. When I leave the house, every Thursday I will take one envelope. That's it. There is no take all of them with you and borrow from the next month. It doesn't work like that. Or you're going to come to the end of the month and have none. Now, monthly shopping, I guess, could be done, but this is a way, the way she explains it, is if you run out of something, milk or eggs or anything midweek, you just have to tell yourself, I only have a few more days, and then I get to buy it again. You can go a few days without anything and find substitutions or your way around it. If you come mid-month, and you have nothing and you're doing monthly shopping, that's a whole lot harder to try and substitute and come up with ideas for half of a month. So her thing is go one day, once a week, period. That's it, end of story. So you take your one envelope with you. Now what she does different is she says, if you don't use it all, then you don't put it in the next weeks. You just put it up for savings or whatever. I am not going to do that. If I have money left over in this envelope, I'm going to take it out and I'm going to put it in the next week's envelope and I'll carry it over and over until the end of the month. And then if I have extra, then that can go into whatever slush fund we want to put it in. However, keeping it that tight, I do not know how much extra I will have. However, this week I ended up with $14 extra. So that's fabulous. So I can add that to next week's. If there are five weeks in the month, then I am taking five envelopes and I'm putting $180 in each envelope. So things will be a little bit tighter, but that way you still have money throughout the whole month. So what I'm going to do is then shop the sales 
and I am not doing a pantry kind of challenge or anything like that. I am using what we already have in our freezer and our pantry as a like buffer to start. That way I can just stock up whatever's on sale after I've gotten the necessities that we need. Get those first, then work with what's on sale. Example, this week I just got the door store and roasts are buy one get one free at Kroger here. Chicken breasts are buy one get one free at Kroger. Ham is on sale. Turkey's on sale at Meyer. A lot of baking goods are on sale at Aldi. So after I've already gotten everything that I need, make sure I've got all the needs, you know, we can't go without toilet paper and that kind of stuff, then I will get the sale stuff. And anything left after that, then I can use to get whatever. Um, little candy or, you know, a treat of some kind or whatever for the kids or just put it up, like I said, for the next week. Um, we are also going to help cut back, do a lot of cooking from scratch. And so having all the basic ingredients that you need for just everyday cooking, that is necessities that will be top on the list and stocking up on those things afterwards or when on sale. I am going to be um, still making desserts. I, you know, we're going to be eating healthy, but I'm not going to not make desserts. They're just all going to be from scratch. So instead of a cake mix, I'm doing old fashioned, you know, making it <laughs> straight from scratch, which I say old fashioned because I've used cake mixes forever, but, um, buying the fruit that's on sale, all of that kind of stuff. That's all the stuff that we're going to do. So I spent a little bit of time on this because this is a huge part of household expenses. This is, aside from mortgage, our biggest expense in our house. Um, you guys definitely go check her out if you want. I know some of you have told me to check out The Fundamental Home. I do watch Amanda. I think she's fabulous. Honestly, she probably follows about the same budget that I'm going to be on um, because she does not include toiletries or any of that in her $65, and her $65 a week is for their large family or smaller family of five versus a family of nine that's a door alarm husband's going out <laughs> he must forgot something he's coming back i'm sure so you'll hear it again and um but that is nine people then we would be almost double that amount and like i said she does not include um any of the toiletries and whatever else is needed um but yeah beauty supplies beauty care routine medications uh everything comes out of that 225 dollars that we are going to be spending a week or 180 dollars a week charles is not keen on me doing that with medication so when he shows you his end of it he will separate medications into another column but his reasoning for that is tracking how much we are going to spend on medical um, so that we know how much end of year for taxes, how much we have spent on medical, um, especially with Luke going into therapy, that should be a big, um, chunk of our medical expenses. All right. So that is this part of it. Oh, eating out. I didn't talk about that. So eating out any of uh, that, that is not included in this money. So we really do not eat out. People will bring us stuff as a treat sometimes. The only thing that we do is, if you guys have been with us for a long time, Luke eats Little Caesar pizza all the time. So that we have our own little uh, column Charles will show you, and that is where the Little Caesar pizza kind of thing will go. Um, but this is only for the grocery store. Now, as far as what he is about to show you, he is going to show you the things that we have control over. Okay, we're not going to show our mortgage, our car insurance, cell phones. Those are fixed things. Those are not anything that we have control over um, saving or, you know, not saving. <laughs> but I'm going to go on and turn this over to him. If you guys have any questions about this, about the grocery shopping end of it, then just leave a comment down below and I will answer it as quick as I can, best as I can. 
And if you have any questions about the board that he's about to show you, we will go over this. You guys voted and would like to see a weekly update. So we will go over our board and show you exactly what we've spent. I'll go over my envelopes and show you everything that I've spent along with doing the weekly grocery haul to show you what I bought. I'm going to show you the weekly dinners to show you what I made. Um, a full day of eating so you can see some of the whole day that I've made with the cheap meals that we're going to be making. Um, but he can also answer next week any questions that you have about anything he discusses with this board as we show you the board next week and review it. So here is Charles. All right, so the main thing with this is we wanted to keep it simple. There's a lot of different ways we could have done up a budget. There's a lot of different ways we could have done up a tracking system, but the more complicated it gets, the less likely you are to actually use it. So what we came up with was an idea to basically work this on the things that we can really control from a day-to-day -day basis or within a month-to-month -month basis because they may actually kind of change a little bit. And so when Noelle mentioned that we weren't going to track things like um, the mortgage or the cell phones, it's because on a month-to-month -month basis those are fixed. And whereas I will account for that coming out of our income, so I kind of know what we have left, really putting that up on a board wouldn't do anything more than just kind of make you feel good because you hit the number that you put up. So what it boils down to is what we really did feel we could control. And so I put some categories across the top and I want this to be general enough to be easy to do, but specific enough that I can see where we might be able to improve month over month. And so my categories across the top and kind of who they would apply to going down from top to bottom or in each one of the rows. And so I have household, personal, school, entertainment, miscellaneous, and automotive. And when we take a look at those in a little bit more depth, in the household we have grocery, utility, repair, and special occasions. Special occasions would be things like our birthdays or Easter, Christmas, um, those times when we actually apply money either from a household or to an individual um, that we need to account for from month to month. In the personal, we just have the clothing and the medical. Um, medical would be things like I had to go to the doctor, so I had a deductible that I needed to pay, or I have some medication um, that I need to pick up at the pharmacy, and that would all go into the medical because, again, that's going to change from month to month. In the school, I just have incidental. Now, we do have tuition fees, but again, a uh, month-to-month -month basis, I can't change the tuition fee, so I just give a place for the incidental, which would be things like we needed to pay book fees or lab fees or you know some sort of incidental fee for the school. Um, in the entertainment column, I have internet, which is basically just our internet service itself. Um, we do have some control over that, so I put that in this category. I have streaming, that's our Hulu, our Netflix, um, eventually when Amazon Prime comes around for renewal. Yes, we use it for a little bit more than just the video, we use it for all the shipping. Um, wouldn't change that for the world, but that will kind of go in that entertainment streaming. Um, and then computer services, which are basically things like the Adobe software that we use to create these videos along with uh, McAfee internet, virus, antivirus, etc. So those sort of things. In the miscellaneous, it's just that. We have miscellaneous. It's those things that um, the kids needed $20 to go to the movies or um, we bought just some general stuff for the house. We had to replace some glasses or dishes or just something miscellaneous that we need to account for. Um, food under miscellaneous is a little bit different than when we look at grocery. Um, and that's where, when Noelle mentioned things like the pizza that we get for Luke because he eats the Little Caesars pizza, that gives me a place to kind of account for those types of food that we buy directly from a restaurant versus buying food that we would prepare at home. And we don't do that very often, but it's one of those categories I'd like just to make sure we're not spending more there than what we actually thought we were planning to do. And then the last category under the auto, we have fuel and maintenance. Um, Obviously, the fuels are gas from month to month, and that will definitely vary. Uh, in the summertime, I would anticipate that to slow down a little bit because we're not running back and forth to school. We'll see how that works out between running kids to other activities that they would do during the summer. And then maintenance, um, 
right now that would just be the car repairs, oil changes, things like that that we need to do. Um, down the down the columns end of it though, if we uh, if we look at the rows on the household, um, so household is just kind of a general category. If it doesn't really apply to one person, um, but it applies to a bunch of people within the house, then I just kind of put a household category. But otherwise, I put categories in for myself and Noel and each one of the kids, um, especially when it comes to the things that might be miscellaneous or clothing, so we can kind of see who we spent the the money on that particular month to get a feel for if there's areas we could improve a little bit. Um, so I have each one of the people in the household here. And then down here, you'll notice I have kind of a week to week throughout the month of April. So I've got uh, the five different weeks that make up April outlined here. And the purpose for that is when we start doing things like grocery, if we run to get, you know, this is on special over here. So we're gonna stock up a little bit because it's the right thing to do like Luke's juice um, it gives us an opportunity to kind of categorize those numbers into a general week, which makes them much easier to track. If I were to just look at this and just say, well, this is my entire grocery for the entire month, I'm going to be scratching my head and thinking, well, did I add up all these charges? Do I just need this one? This is going to give us kind of that snapshot to figure out how it generalized. And then down at the bottom, it's just basically, it's very simple. This is what I've actually spent so far this month. This is what I budgeted to spend, and am I doing good or am I not? And so I did play with colors a little bit just because we have like a bazillion dry erase markers floating around so I can use, you know, I can use green if we still have money left we can spend. I, I'm in red if I'm overspent. This just gives us that opportunity to look and see, you know, have we overspent, have we underspent, is there money left, is there not? Um, both in kind of a general category as well as how are we doing for the entire month? So when I look at this, it's just very simple. You see, I do have some numbers already filled out on here. Um, my utilities, they're really gonna lag a month. You know, I pay the March utilities at the beginning of April and April will be the beginning of May. So I'm gonna have to be, you know, obviously from household aware, what we do in April will impact how much we're gonna spend in May. But I don't want to just kind of hold open because this is really what we spent and when we spent it. So when you take a look at things like the utilities um, where I spent $444, you know, we planned to spend $440 because we knew we would have water, electric, gas, and this month uh, is trash and trash. Trash is basically in every three month period for us, which is why it's a little bit higher this month. Um, and it was about $4 more than I expected, so not a big deal. Um, but then you can kind of come down and look and see I've done things like we've got medical, um, bought some prescriptions or some Claritin, um, we bought some clothes for the girls. So far we've spent a little bit in the miscellaneous categories. You'll notice that um, if you come across here, I have like $17 in food under the miscellaneous and that is for the week of April the 1st to the 5th. And what that's doing is just letting me say, hey, this was the week where I went out and I bought pizza, so it's in that week. So again, if I have to buy pizza for a birthday party or we're buying you know, just some general food for whatever reason, it's just a way to quickly identify when did we spend the money um, in that given month. And then for car repairs, I actually have gone out already. I knew I was gonna spend money to fix um, basically breaks on the Highlander this month. So I've got $300 in here to do work on the car. Um, as you can see, I put 291 in. Now that's a number that, um, even though I still have $9 left, that may get a little bit better uh, because there was core deposit on the brake caliper that I bought. Um, and so I may not need uh, that particular caliper at all. Um, wait to see when we get it back from getting it serviced if they needed to use that or not. Um, but hopefully that number will go down a little bit, but I also know uh, we're gonna need to do oil change on my car this month. So again, $300 will give us a rough idea of what we're planning for. And if, uh, if all goes well, we'll spend uh, basically about $2,300 a month this month on all these incidentals. Um, right now we've spent about $11.93 with $11.80 to go. And so the way that I kind of envision this from, you know, video to video, if we're doing kind of a weekly recap, is that will give us the ability to just give you guys a quick heads up on how we're doing toward what we planned for the month. 
and a very simple snapshot. So the other thing that we're going to do here is, um, those of you that have seen this video, you know that uh, Luke runs around and he loves anything he can write on or erase. Uh, so we'll take a camera snapshot of this board after we've updated it from time to time. And that way, if for some reason magic little fingers erase the board, we'll be able to reconstruct it from the, the phone snapshot that we took. So um, we do have a plan. I did mount this thing. Um, I'm about 5'10", so if you can tell, it's, um, it's a little better than uh, five foot off the ground, which makes it harder for Luke to get to, but I'm a firm believer of if he can get into it, he will. So uh, we'll take some pictures and, and keep it updated, and then uh, we might be able to post those pictures as well um, as still shots on the videos for you guys too, so you can kind of slow down and see what we've uh, what we've done so far. So, as Noel said, any questions on it? Um, this is our simple, and we'll see where we go from there. All right, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you found that useful and a good look at how we're going to do things, and we will see you next week for an update. Bye, everybody. Bye.